Picture this, a small village called Bethany, nestled on the eastern slope of the Mount of Olives. A frantic message is sent out from two sisters, Mary and Martha, to Jesus. The air is thick with fear and desperation as the sisters plead for their brother Lazarus, who is gravely ill. His life hangs by a thread, his breaths growing shallower with each passing moment. Mary and Martha, their hearts heavy with worry, pen a distress call to Jesus. Their message is simple yet urgent, a cry for help for their dying brother. The bond between Jesus and this family is strong and deep, a bond forged by love and mutual respect. The sisters' message is laced with hope, a hope that Jesus, their friend, their teacher, can intervene, can save Lazarus from the clutches of death. But Jesus, in his divine wisdom, doesn't rush to Bethany. He waits, two days to be exact. Now Jesus decides it's time to make the journey to Bethany, but not before he drops a bombshell on his followers. As the story unfolds, Jesus, in his unerring wisdom, reveals to his disciples that Lazarus has indeed passed away. But he doesn't stop there. He tells them of his intent to resurrect their friend, to bring him back from the shadows of death. This news, as you can imagine, sends ripples of confusion and fear through the disciples. The recent threats to Jesus' life in Judea are still fresh in their minds. They can't help but wonder why would he risk it? Why would he venture back into the lion's den for Lazarus? Amid the turmoil, one voice rises above the rest. Thomas, ever the loyal one, rallies the others, saying, Let us also go, that we may die with him. And with that they set off, their hearts heavy but their resolve unshaken. As Jesus finally approaches Bethany, Martha, ever the active one, rushes out to meet him. Martha, in the midst of her grief, recognizes the power that Jesus holds. Her faith in him is steadfast, unwavering, even in the face of her brother's death. She believes with all her heart that Jesus is the one who can change the course of events, the one who can bring her brother back to life. And so, with a mixture of sorrow and hope etched on her face, Martha confronts Jesus. Lord, she says, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Her words are both an accusation and a statement of faith. She is acknowledging Jesus' power over life and death, yet she's also questioning why he didn't use that power to prevent Lazarus' death. But Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, sees beyond her words. He understands her grief, her confusion, her faith. And he responds not with a rebuke, but with a proclamation, a promise that echoes through time and space, reaching not just Martha, but all of us. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus says. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. It's a powerful statement, the kind that shakes the very foundations of our understanding of life and death. Jesus is not just saying he can resurrect Lazarus. He's saying he is the source of resurrection, the source of life itself. In Jesus, death is not the end. In Jesus, there is hope for life beyond the grave. And that hope, that promise, is not just for Lazarus, it's for every single person who puts their faith in him. Martha, Jesus continues, do you believe this? And Martha, with a glimmer of hope, affirms her belief in him, saying, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ the Son of God who is coming into the world. This affirmation, this statement of faith, is the cornerstone of Martha's encounter with Jesus. It's a testament to her unwavering belief in his power, his identity, and his promises. It's a beacon of hope in the midst of her grief, a light in the darkness. Martha, with a glimmer of hope, affirms her belief in him, saying, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Now Jesus meets Mary, the other sister, and is moved by her grief and the mourners with her. As the story unfolds, we see a facet of Jesus that is both profound and deeply human. His friend Lazarus has died, and amidst the grief and sorrow, Jesus too feels the sting of loss. The intensity of this moment is captured in three simple words, Jesus wept. This is the shortest verse in the Bible, yet it carries such a depth of meaning. It is a raw testament to Jesus' humanity, his ability to empathize with our suffering, our pain, and our loss. In this moment, Jesus is not just a divine figure, but also a man experiencing sorrow. This verse, Jesus wept, is a powerful reminder that Jesus understands our grief because he himself has experienced it. He is not a distant, detached deity, but one who is intimately familiar with the human experience. He knows what it is to feel, to hurt, to mourn. Consider the depth of the love Jesus had for Lazarus and his sisters that he would be moved to tears. 
This is not a passing emotion, but a deep visceral response to the pain of loss. It's a testament to the strength of the bond Jesus shared with Lazarus and a glimpse into the heart of a savior who loves deeply and mourns sincerely. But his tears are not just for Lazarus. They are for Martha and Mary, for the mourners gathered, for all who suffer loss. In their grief, they are not alone. Jesus stands with them, sharing in their sorrow. He is the companion in our suffering, the comforter in our distress. Remember, it is perfectly okay to grieve, to feel, to cry. Even Jesus did. It's a part of our human experience. But also remember, in the midst of your tears, you're not alone. Jesus weeps with you. He understands your pain, your loss, your heartache. Even in the face of death and mourning, Jesus' compassion shines through. He weeps with those who weep. His tears are a testament to his profound love for us, a love that is both deeply human and divinely compassionate. The time has come. Jesus, standing in front of Lazarus' tomb, commands it to be opened. A hush falls over the crowd, each person holding their breath in anticipation. The stone is moved aside, revealing the dark, seemingly lifeless interior. Martha, sister of Lazarus, visibly trembles, voicing her concern about the smell of decay. But Jesus, with an unwavering voice, reassures her. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? His words, imbued with a profound certainty, resonate through the silence. The air is thick with tension, yet there is an undercurrent of hope that pulses like a heartbeat. Suddenly, the world seems to hold its breath. Jesus, with a voice that echoes across the landscape, calls forth, Lazarus, come out! His command, strong and clear, slices through the tense silence. The crowd watches, their eyes wide with a mixture of fear and awe. Moments pass, and then a rustling sound emanates from the tomb. And then a figure appears at the entrance of the tomb. It's Lazarus, alive, his face obscured by the linen cloth that had been his shroud. The crowd gasps, their astonishment palpable. The dead man walks, his steps slow but steady, still bound in his grave clothes. The reality of the situation dawns on the crowd. Jesus, the man from Nazareth, has brought Lazarus back from the dead. He has defied the natural order, showcasing a power beyond human comprehension, a power over death itself. The crowd's initial shock gives way to a cacophony of exclamations, cries of wonder, and prayers of thanks. It was a miracle, a testament to the limitless power of faith, a demonstration of divine love. Jesus had breathed life back into Lazarus, a man who had been in the tomb for four days. He had turned the impossible into reality. And just like that, a man dead for four days walks out of his tomb alive, the impossible made possible. The crowd is in an uproar. Many believe in Jesus, seeing this miraculous sign, but not everyone is thrilled. Dissent begins to ripple through the crowd. Some are awed, seeing the miracle as irrefutable proof of Jesus' divine authority. They marvel at this man who commands even death to release its grip. Yet others are skeptical, even fearful. They perceive this act not as a miracle, but as a threat to their understanding of the world, an upset to the established order. A division forms among the people. On one side, those who now wholeheartedly believe in Jesus, their faith solidified by the extraordinary resurrection of Lazarus. On the other side, those who are unsettled, their unease growing into a dangerous plot. The miracle has stirred the pot, causing some to conspire against Jesus to seek his life. This miracle, the raising of Lazarus, has far-reaching consequences. It's a pivotal event in Jesus' ministry, a moment that amplifies his message and accelerates his journey towards the cross. It's a testament to his power, not just over physical ailments, but over the ultimate enemy, death itself. It's a beacon of hope for those who believe, a promise of eternal life, but it's also a catalyst for conflict. It's this miraculous act, this undeniable display of power that pushes Jesus' opponents to act, to plot his downfall. It's a moment of tension, of escalating stakes, setting the stage for the climactic events to come. The raising of Lazarus, a powerful sign of Jesus' mastery over death, a foreshadowing of his own resurrection, a story of hope, faith, and divine love. If you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to hear more stories like this one, stories that inspire, challenge, and uplift, then why not give us a thumbs up? It's a small gesture, but one that's truly appreciated. Become a part of our growing family and subscribe to our channel. May God bless you and all your endeavors. Thank you for watching.